How's it going everybody? It's Jared back once again and it is CES Day 2. So if you're wondering what today had in store for everybody, I wrote down a couple of my favorite picks. Let's go ahead and get started. So of course, like usual, I have my uh, written down notes here. Uh, you know, getting back to Nvidia again, kind of from yesterday. Um, they did their grid, grid demo today, the Nvidia Grid demo. This is their um, sort of cloud-based mobile gaming platform, I guess you could call it. Um, the only thing I could really get out of it, although it was capable of, you know, running um, console games and so on, um, is that there was a lot of lag, a considerable amount of lag. Now, the uh, NVIDIA guy that was um, sort of dis uh, demonstrating this process um, blamed it on his sticks, his, his control stick for the uh, controller he was using. It was latency. It was latency. You can't fool us, NVIDIA. Uh, moving on from there, uh, the boys over at Fandroid.com actually showed us a video of the Tegra 4 uh, CPU putting out um, 4K format, video format actually, Ultra HD. Um, that looked absolutely fantastic, um, especially considering it was coming from a Tegra 4 mobile CPU. So it's going to be really interesting to look into the future to see what kind of devices, or not so much the devices, but what kind of um, full full size display mirroring software and integration that will come with future devices using the Tegra 4 process. So that's really exciting. But just um, again, imagine. Um, outputting 4K or Ultra HD to a full-size display in full clarity with your mobile phone. How amazing would that be? Also, Sharp today showed off their IGZO. Is that proper IGZO? Yeah, I-G-Z-O smartphones. And it's not so much the smartphones that are the IGZO, it's actually the display. It's their IGZO display, uh, mobile display technology, which is absolutely fantastic. As everybody knows, Sharp is really, really well known for their amazing TV displays and the clarity and the sharpness that comes with them. Well, they've started moving that towards um, mobile phones and these uh, displays apparently have a much, much higher resolution than your Android display. But what's really, really cool is that it's extremely power efficient. Apparently so power efficient, in fact, that once the um, power is turned off to the phone, it can actually hold that image, whatever image is on your phone. Now, obviously we weren't able to see any of these demonstrations, but apparently, technically, in theory, that's what it's capable of doing. It, it can hold enough energy in the screen itself, I'm assuming is from what I could understand, that it will actually uh, hold a static image in place once you power off the device, which is mind blowing. So it's going to be really interesting to see if any of that technology makes its way to North America or even UK markets. Um, as far as I understand for now, it's just being held in uh, the Asian markets. <clears throat> Excuse me, although I'm not really sure which one specifically, but uh, nevertheless, the technology is there. It's cool and hopefully we see it in the coming future. Another really, really cool and ingenious brand new invention that I've actually looked into uh, probably about a month ago or so um, is the Tactus Morphine Screen. Basically what it is, is a display, be it, now usually they're saying it should probably kind of stay in the tablet world, although it could be um, engineered to work with smartphones, but what it does is by using special gases, it actually fills the layers of the screen and it'll actually raise up little buttons, like say for instance in the event of using a keyboard or something like that. Um, the little buttons will actually raise up in the screen and the uh, different sort of um, formats that this could be used on is like video games, well really anything for that matter, but it was so cool to actually see the um, screen as soon as he brought up the keyboard and just kind of raised up all these buttons and he kind of tilted it to the side and you could see all these buttons. Really, really cool. Um, we should hopefully see this, you know, I'm guessing probably in the next couple of years, although it probably won't happen right away. I'm assuming that that'll probably boost up the price of tablets quite a bit. Um, what's really interesting though about this is that um, it actually doesn't use any battery once those buttons have kind of been raised. So say for instance, you do get into your keyboard and um, the screen morphs to the little keyboard buttons. Um, once those keys have been raised, it doesn't use any more juice. It only uses the juice to, I guess, put the little mixture of gases together to create um, those tactile buttons. Really, really cool stuff. You guys should definitely look out for that. And if you're interested in following it, just type in Tactus Morphin Screen on YouTube and just be completely amazed because this is definitely the next level of display technology. This is super cool. So another neat piece of gadgetry it wasn't so much like a TV or smartphone or computer chips or anything like that. It was actually um, a product called uh, from Nectar Mobile, N-E-C-T-A-R Mobile Power, Nectar Mobile Power, I believe. 
Anyways, what they had was a battery pack, but it's not your typical battery pack that most of us are used to, which hit the uh, market recently. Um, this one, you know, you don't plug into the side of your computer, or plug into the wall to charge up, and then you've got like whatever it is, 6,500 milliamps. This has got 55,000 milliamps of power stored. Now, this is the interesting part. First of all, the base station, which is what I like to actually call it, because this um, unit actually comes in two pieces, the base station, uh, which is about the size of two smartphones, maybe even two um, Samsung Galaxy Note 2s kind of sandwiched together. That's about the size of the station itself. And then of course, the second piece is what they call a pod. And this is really where um, all of the energy and battery is stored. I'm not really sure the process that's used or what's inside of these pods, but these pods are made of plastic and they're extremely lightweight when fully, I guess, charged, you could say, but they're actually disposable and not disposable in the regular way that we're all used to, you know, if you happen to go to your local radio shack or whatever it may be to chuck them your old batteries or go to the recycling depot. This is real plastic. Once you've used up all of the energy inside these pods, you can actually just chuck it into your recycling bin and the plastic in there is recyclable and there's no contaminants that you really have to be worried about. Um, now they're calling it the two week battery pack. Um, I'm guessing they call it a two week because they say that 5,500 milliamps, or I'm sorry, 55,000 milliamps of power is enough to power your smartphone or tablet or whatever you may have um, based on average use for two weeks before needing to, um, I guess, purchase more um, pods, I guess you could say. Anyways, the pods are about $10 each. And again, I believe they come with 55,000 milliamps. So 10 bucks for 55,000 milliamps of power, depending if you're going traveling or something like that, might be a really, really great idea. Although the station itself is around $300. I think it was 250 to $300. So you're making a bit of an investment, but you know, if you need the energy there, you need your battery power. Well, there you go. There's, there's your answer. And probably my favorite piece today had to be about the Sony Xperia Z. Now they came out with the, um, it's the new Z line. At the moment it's the Z and the ZL. The ZL is pretty much the exact same thing as the Z. I guess depending on where you are in the world, Z or Z. Um, but um, uh, the Xperia Z and uh, the same specs, however the Xperia Z is waterproof, the ZL is not so much. Uh, so I let's go ahead and run through the specs. Um, so. They definitely impressed me. They impressed everybody else there uh, in the show with the new Z line of devices, the Xperia Z. Um, it has a 1080p display at 441 DPI, five inch display. So it's obviously competing with, um, you know, the Galaxy Note 2 or more specifically the Droid DNA. Um, it's got the mobile uh, Bravia engine too. So that's awesome. So previous iterations were just the regular Bravia engine or 1.0 if you will. And now it's the Bravia engine two is what they're calling it. A 13 megapixel rear facing camera with, get this, HDR video recording. Mind blowing, right? Um, actually, if you look at some of the video samples, they look really sharp. It's basically like looking at a moving, you know, HDR picture, <laughs> which is just video recording, but you know what I mean? It really looked quite impressive. So I really hope, um, based on the following specs that I'm gonna read you guys, that I can get my hands on one of these to play with because uh, the camera should be a lot of fun. Anyways, 1080p screen, 441 DPI, five inch display, Bravia Engine 2, 13 megapixel rear facing camera with the HDR um, video recording mode. Uh, you, it comes with 16 gigs of internal storage, but wait, oh! Uh, external mic, uh, micro SD card slot. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon quad core S4 Pro CPU. Thank you very much, Sony. Uh, two gigs of RAM, which is to be expected. It's definitely the standard today for flagship devices and premium Android and other de devices these days. 2370 milliamp battery, so that should give you plenty of battery power um, to play with your phone all day long. And it is running Android 4.1.2. I would have really liked to see Android 4.2 considering they're showing it at CES in 2013. And I mean, Jelly Bean 4.2, uh, I'm sorry, came out last year, albeit that was only a couple of months ago. Nevertheless, I mean, come on, Sony, pick up your game. You're always just a little step behind the software, aren't you? Um, and again, it's waterproof, so that's really exciting. I'm really excited to get my hands on a Sony Xperia Z if I can. I've never actually used 
or touched a um, Xperia or even a Sony phone for that matter. So that'd be pretty cool. Anyways, guys, let me know what your favorite tidbit of CES Day 2 was for today in the comments below. Let me know if you're looking forward to anything I've mentioned here in this video. Um, thanks again for watching. Uh, if you appreciated this video, mash that like button down below. And if you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future. We do try to put out videos five days a week. Again, thank you very much, folks, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.